Okay, I'm going to have to admit something to you. Uh-oh. Um, I sneak things into the movie theaters, mostly because they have bad food options, like very unhealthy food options. That's true. So I usually bring a really big purse and sneak stuff in. That's if okay. anybody sees my face at a movie theater, mm-hmm. please let me bring in the food that I have in my purse. <laughs> I have been known to do that a few times myself. <laughs> and I'm always afraid the person taking the tickets will smell it. Like, I want to They're the like, buckets. sir, why are you carrying a purse, number right? one? <laughs> I think it will be cool for me to get an insight on what their life looks like and then also for us to just have fun together. Maybe working out, going to lunch together, maybe feeding the ducks, who knows. I lived on the East Coast and I was looking for some different opportunities. Uh, I lived in Key West, Florida. Oh, nice. Yes, on a tropical island. Yeah, Uh, here we are. I know, right? (laughs) I was security for a private resort and a private island Let's go. and um, it was a wonderful opportunity but it's incredibly expensive down there yeah you know and and I wanted to explore a few other things in life you know and I've never been out to the west coast so I figured I started looking at moving here and um, thinking about a change in career so yeah. trucking has always had a, a special interest for me yeah so what, does it stem from something else like do you have anybody in your what in the world Sorry, bad drivers. Right? <laughs> my, um, the earliest memory I have is my best friend growing up. His father was a truck driver. Okay. And, but from there, I've always been around trucks, whether it's working in a warehouse or having friends that were drivers uh, or something of that nature. Did so you ride along with him? I did. Yeah? Yeah, he took me around. best friend's dad. That's Yeah. Cool. He had one of those old long nose Pete's. Uh, you know, big, loud, all that kind of good stuff. But it was great. I, I loved riding in there. Yeah. And um, so in my 20s, after the military, I started thinking about being a truck driver, but life happened, so. So you went military, Mm -hmm. and then Key West? How long did you serve? Uh, Four years. Nice. Yes. Thank you for your service. What branch were you in? I was in the Navy. Oh, nice. Absolutely. Do they have a base down there? In Key West. Or just like down? We do. There is a a base in Key West. Oh, there is, okay. Mm -hmm. Which I never actually served there. I yeah. did most of my tours in um, in Florida, uh, up in North Florida, mm. Jacksonville, Pensacola, yeah. that yeah. area. And, um, but I left the military. I actually moved out to Denver. Lived in Estes Park, Colorado for I a little bit. I had a oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's but so pretty. I got a cabin up in the mountains. Nice. You know, it was beautiful. Then Halloween night, it snowed. And it was more snow than I'd ever seen in my life, right? We had like eight or nine feet. Yeah. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. When it falls <laughs> out, I'm going back to Florida. I am a beach bomb. I can't do the snow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I moved back down to Florida. And I went to Key West and lived down there for, for years and years. Yeah. And then eventually, I ended up moving up to Virginia. That's uh, nice, To right? be with some family. Yeah. Yeah. And um, humid? closer to them. What's that? Is it humid up there? Uh, not too bad. No. In the summer, it's a little bit, but not too bad. Considering my life in Florida, where it's 100% humidity year-round. Yeah, that's plus, you know. But the weather. Right. For some reason, I thought that you were from Hawaii. I just always linked you to Hawaii because of your tattoo. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I do, I do like the Hawaiian vibe. Yeah. So I lean more towards that kind of tropical culture than I do the Caribbean culture. Isn't it funny how you can be, like, in your heart, mm-hmm. you probably see yourself as, like, a tropical, like, beach bum type of person. Absolutely. But where you are is not that at all. But, like, mm-hmm. you in your life and in your heart, you know that you are this completely other person than what you surround yourself with. Oh, completely. It's kind of interesting to think It about. is. Yeah. But I, I like that difference, that juxtaposition of... Being a beach bomb, living a life as a desert rat. (laughs) It's so different. It is. It's completely different. But that's why I moved out here is because I've never experienced anything like this. And I like exploring new things and new opportunities. So, you know. uh, I can see that. I decided to do trucking and got to looking around. And Phoenix seemed like the best opportunity for trucking schools and trucking companies. Um, Did you initially have your eye on night? Yes and no. It never really occurred to me to work for night. That being said, I 
seen night trucks on the road. To me, they're the best looking trucks on the road, you know. Um, <laughs> they're the prettiest, they're the cleanest, yeah. you know, in every sense of the word. So I've always kind of been partial to night. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I was actually looking at Swift. Yeah. Mainly. Yeah. And I came because out Because of yeah. their training program, you think? Uh, just a bigger company, and I knew the name. Yeah. Really. And um, other than that, I didn't know too much about them. But I came out here, I went to school, and my particular trainer was a night driver, so she was always talking night up. And I said, you know what? I'll give them a try. Wait, so you didn't go to our CDL program, right? No, I didn't. You went to a school in the valley. I did. And then you got hired on through Squire? Uh, I did, yes. Yeah. Yeah, came on, oh, I did so my, cool. my Squire training. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was good. But Mitch Atkinson was my recruiter. Nuh-uh. Yes, he was. How long ago was this? Oh, a while back. Like four years? Probably, think more? about that, yeah. And uh, yeah, I called him up, and or, or I put in an application, he called me up. Yeah. And Tell me the dirt on Mitch. Is he a, is he a good recruiter? He is a good Shoot recruiter. Shoots straight. He did. Yeah. I I dealt with recruiters in other situations before, and Mitch took care of it. Yeah. You know, um, recruiters tend to get a bad reputation from I time know. to time. Oh yeah. And I got to say, Mitch actually did a really good job taking care of me. Good. Uh, gave me all the good details. But he didn't like oversell and under deliver, like it was pretty. Absolutely, it was exactly what he said of me, right? Good. And, um, but it was good, but in, in the overall process, he called me up, looked at my application and said, hey, can you be here next week? We can get you in. That's awesome. I said, yes, sir, I'll be there. And uh, never looked back. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. You've held a lot of different positions. I have. Knight is known for that. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's driving associates or office personnel, like we switch around like crazy. Absolutely. But I, I think that's a great idea in terms of people being able to get into different opportunities, see things from a different point of view. Yeah. Uh, I know I had a certain point of view of the office and of trucking in general. Mm -hmm being new to the industry and only being in the truck and then coming in and, and dealing with the office and their paperwork and how they interact with drivers and all that and, uh, and then just being able to actually interact with more drivers on a regular basis yeah. and uh, it really opened my eyes up and how that works out so going back out on the road here again it's a totally yeah. different perspective do you feel like Okay, what was your, when you came into the office, mm -hmm. so your first role was DQP instructor, or Correct. just helping with class, mm -hmm. what was the biggest shock? Like, what surprised you the most about coming from a driver role to uh, an instructor type of role? Um, I, I like my solitude in the truck, right? Yeah, yeah. So to come in and take a job where I am put in front of a large group of people and, and teach them, talk to them, that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, it was a, a, I'm not exactly a shy person, yeah. but it wasn't something that I was really looking forward to. It's not my, my normal sort of thing. And um, Is so, it, Do you think that's why you want to go back over the road? No. Actually, to be <laughs> honest, I got into the class and I still remember my first class and the first conversations with, with that group, and I fell in love with it. Yeah. No, I, I do love that role. I love uh, supporting our drivers and, and being available to them. Yeah. But the truth is, I look out the window at my desk and I see all the trucks driving by. I talk to the drivers and their stories, and I just miss it so much. Really? You know, I, I love the travel. I love the driving. Um, for me, like per, a personal hobby of mine, is to just hop on the road and drive. Yeah. So it's very relaxing. It is. I've always done that. Like, even when I was in high school, when I first got my license, I would just drive around the city and listen to music and try to find. Obviously, we have a few mountains here in Phoenix, so try to find cool areas where you could like go up in elevation a bit and then see right. the the lights or see the sunset or see whatever. Oh, absolutely. I feel like being in a truck, you see more. You do. Maybe that's why I'm recognizing all of these crazy drivers. A lot of it is that you are physically sitting up higher, so yeah. it's a much better view. Yeah.
but at the same time, I think subconsciously you realize that you're in such what a is big that? vehicle. Why is it beeping? That is our distance alert where the two cars change lanes in front of us. They I didn't say even that see that. That we were a little too close. Did it push the brake for you? It did. It did? It did not. Oh. I was surprised. I was expecting it to. I have a loaner car right now because my car's in the shop and it pushes the brakes for you. Right. And it scares the bejesus out of you. Apparently, I follow too closely. Oh no. I mm. If only you knew a good Smith system instructor, right? <laughs> Probably wouldn't be able to drive a truck if they pulled my MVR. I'm just saying. Uh oh. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I've only totaled the one car. We had, I had mentioned earlier that I wanted to get into trucking in yeah. my 20s. Yeah. And that was actually why I didn't. Because I had a real bad habit of getting speeding tickets. I love to oh, drive really? fast. <laughs> and I used to street race and, and things of that nature. <gasps> oh, no. Did you and have a lot of tickets on your record? I did. I, I got a ticket about every four months. Oh, my for heavens. For speeding for several years in a row. And why the trucking company was even willing to talk to me is <laughs> beyond me. But they I had was, fallen off, right? At the, at the some, point Some of, of them had, sure. And, <laughs> but I was on my way to the recruiter to sign the paperwork to go to school yeah. and got a speeding ticket. Oh, my gosh. So I called him up. I was like, yes, sir, I am not ready for this. I'll, I'll call you in a few years. How long did you wait? Um, I was maybe 25 at the time. Okay. And I was 35 when I got back into it or so. <gasps> That's a lot of years to wait. It was. I don't think most trucking companies even look back that far. But however, most safety directors would think, there's a pattern here. Exactly. That is so, not good. <laughs> so I figured I wanted several years to clean driving on my record, so I cleaned it up. And, yeah. And, um, That's funny. Yeah. I Wait, wanted I... to be a driver that truckers would be proud of. Aww. You know, I wanted them to, to see me down the road and go, you know what? I like his driving. He yeah. can be one of us. Oh, that's and, like be accepted. Exactly. And then I became a trucker and realized how bad my driving still was. Really? And and how much improvement I could make. Like on. how? Where? Like if I hopped into your seat, mm -hmm. what would happen? Like what would be the first thing? I mean, granted, you don't know my trucking ability or my sure. my driving skill set, but. What's the first thing that's kind of like, red flag, like you need to work on this? Like, My, I feel like staying between the lane lines would be hard. It, it can be. Yeah. Uh, especially in construction zones where they twist and turn Ooh. a lot. But there's a couple of tricks to that uh, as far as staying to the left or to the right. But for me, my biggest issue was following distance. Oh. My thought was, hey, there's a car up there. We've got plenty of distance. I need to speed up and get close. Ooh. Yeah, right? Yeah. And, or changing lanes. It never occurred to me that if I'm going to move in front of another vehicle that I need a greater amount of space. Or, like, think about how fast they're going. Or, exactly. Yeah. A lot of that did not occur to me. So, so getting into trucking school and then being in a truck, it changed my perspective of that. Yeah. So now... I'm much more open to leaving the space between the vehicles. I notice that there's a lot of space always when there you're is. driving, which is very good, especially somebody who has rear-ended someone. I am I always open that. to the suggestion that the vehicle in the lane on either side of me mm -hmm. will make an emergency lane change, yeah. and as soon as they get in front of me, they'll hit their brakes. So that's always my thought behind good it. Heavens. Right? So you just like constantly stay further Exactly. Back. And even like here in the tunnel, we have a curve coming up, right? Mm -hmm. And let's assume that there is no traffic here. I can't see what's on the other side of that curve. Why would I drive very quickly into it yeah. if I can't stop, right? Have you ever driven port? I have not done port, no. no. I think it would be cool to get home more often. Mm -hmm. I do like the dedicated. I like the yeah. being home on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I love that we have so much dedicated option now Absolutely. these days. Absolutely. It's really cool. I just read um, an internal email, did you see it this morning, about um, just kind of freight, the freight market going into 2019 and how we're getting even more creative with um, just making more route options right. for what our drivers want. Absolutely. Like, obviously that needs to be done, right? Of course. But. I think a lot of trucking companies forget like how important it is to just follow suit with supply and demand. 
Like, if somebody wants that route and wants to be home more often, make it happen, bro. Absolutely. Come on now. The drivers have so many different needs and desires these days, and we mm -hmm. can't just say, here's one option, take it or leave it. You need to be out a month at a time. You right. can't be, oh, sorry, no. We don't live in that world anymore. No. no. When you drove before you went into the office, mm -hmm. what did you like to do for fun? And did that change when you started working in the office? For me, one of my biggest hobbies is photography. Ooh, I know that. You take amazing photos. Well, thank you very much. Um, and I've gotten into drone photography as well. What is with that? What's it Flying about? drones around. So I can get those good aerial shots and wide landscape shots. Do you have to have a different, like, drone for drone photography versus drone video footage? Same drones. You're just taking like a still of the video? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've got 4K cameras on my drones uh -huh. and they can do video or still. So, did you do that a lot when you were over the road? I did. Quite a bit. I don't feel like I saw those pictures. I, I had a, a smaller, cheaper drone at the time because I was still uh, trying to learn. Yeah. So a lot of it didn't come out as well as I wanted. But well, taking a still of a video isn't always high res, right? Unless it's like a really high res video, or uh, how does that usually work? it is. Mo yeah. Most cameras will come out with the same quality picture. Yeah. So, but I'm a big believer that I love driving. But just as much as I want to be in the truck, you need to get out of the truck to totally. clear your head. Yeah. What's your favorite hobby while you're over the road? Leave it in the comment section below. So, photography, what else do you do outside of the truck when you're driving? Um, I'm a big movie buff. I love catching the latest movies. Yeah. Right? What do you use? Just uh, like Netflix or? I, I do Netflix. If it's and, illegal, don't, and don't Amazon. tell me. No, I don't. I, I support the film industry, so I don't <laughs> use the illegal sites. So. Bleep that out. Exactly. <laughs> and I believe in supporting the local theater. Totally. So it's oh, really? As okay. crazy as uh, concession stand prices are, I know. I will Holy still go smokes. buy my ticket, my ten dollar popcorn and ten dollar coke. And okay, I'm gonna have to admit something to you. Uh oh. Um, I sneak things into the movie theaters mostly because they have bad food options, like very unhealthy food options. That's true. So I usually bring a really big purse and sneak stuff in. That's if okay. anybody sees my face at a movie theater, mm -hmm. please let me bring in the food that I have in my purse. <laughs> I have been known to do that a few times myself. <laughs> and I'm always afraid the person taking the tickets will smell it. They're like, I want to search They're your like, pockets. <laughs> Sir, why are you carrying a purse, number right? one? <laughs> that. Does it get boring though when you're on like, I imagine Going to Tucson, for example, there's not a lot to look at. There's not. However, you always have like the entertainment of the, what do you call them? Personal vehicles? Is that how you would? I, I, I like that term, personal vehicles. Personal vehicles? Yes, yeah. four wheelers. P oh, four wheelers, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it does have its boring moments, of course. Yeah. But in addition to photography, I love music. I have a very deep passion for that. It's almost religious for me. So I can always find some good music to listen to. But just driving in general, there's so much to observe and pay attention to to make sure that I'm a safe driver. Yeah. That I find I'm working too much to be bored yeah. with it. Like if you're bored, that's probably not a good thing because you're probably not doing what you should be doing. Exactly. That's, thing. When, that's when you know it's time to get out of the truck for a few minutes. Yeah. If you've liked this episode, please subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications.